But Gator, Doug, it's a huge day for some Lions. It is. Let's start with the wide receivers. Huge day for Isaiah Williams, Donovan Peoples-Jones, Caden Davis, and Darius Fountain. It, it's it's one of those weird deals where, and I mean, I can conclude Tom Kennedy in this group. I'm not sure that that Tom Kennedy is is going to break through and, and make the team out of out of uh, camp again. I, you know, he seems like he's a practice squad guy. He's an emergency break glass when you need when you're. When, <laughs> When you need when you need him, he'll be there. But who makes this team? Does do they keep five wide receivers? Is Donovan Peoples Jones is a bigger wide receiver as Isaiah Williams? I, and not only do these guys have to win out the battle amongst each other, they're gonna have to win out the battle amongst guys who become available on Tuesday. Right? I mean, they're, they're, <laughs> there are thirty one other teams that also are going to be cutting people. So if you're Donovan Peoples-Jones, Isaiah Williams, for any of those guys, you're like, not only do I have to beat these guys, I have to beat all the guys that are going to release on Tuesday, be released on Tuesday. And at least I know the system, I'm here. But if if they evaluate somebody somewhere else better than me, and there's a list of candidates we're going to go through later that could get cut, then it could be a very short-lived time on the roster. It could be. I, I feel like when Dan Campbell said that he was desperate to see somebody come up and and just claim the prize of, of that extra receiver. Mm-hmm. I feel like he meant it for a group of people and not this guy. I don't think he meant that for Isaiah Williams. I think he was looking specifically for one of the bigger body types. And you know, there weren't many, they're all six, two. It's not like they're huge. Right? right. But one of those guys at six, two, 200 plus, I think that's what it was meant for. I think that was meant for Caden Davis. Who's six, one, I guess, but Doris fountain at six, two, mm-hmm. I think it was meant for Donovan people's Jones at six foot two. One of those guys, unfortunately, Traquan Smith also is 6'2". He broke his hand. So it's it's for those guys. And somebody step up because none of you has when it comes to the preseason game. We've seen maybe in practice these guys have looked good. We haven't seen it because we're only at two practices. But all the reports were Dory's Fountain was really good. The DPJ, uh, had, it, for a very short time, a, stro- a short stretch, had a really good short stretch of practices. But when it comes to the games... Nobody has stepped up. Isaiah Williams has stepped up, and it looks like okay, yeah, you know, I, I, I didn't mean you, but good. It's, <laughs> you know? Yeah, it's it's awesome that he has stepped up. So I hope he makes the team because he deserves it. You go by merit, he deserves it. So the other receiver spot now, you're looking specific for a body type. I think I really do, because I think Isaiah Williams has done everything to show that you you, you shouldn't let him go. And I don't know if you can sneak him on the practice squad, but these other guys. Step up, but I I really think that it's coming from outside the roster. I think they're going to pick up pick up somebody um, from another team. I think, find it, another I, player. I think it's quite possible, or they, even trade. Dave Burkett projected his fifty three man roster, a Lions insider, Freep, and he's got Amon Ra, St. Brown, obviously, Jamison Williams, and Khalif Raymond making the team. Duh. I'm not dying, Dave. I'm just saying we all know <laughs> that. I'm not. not Wow. But he also has. That's fired. Yeah. He also has Donovan Peoples Jones and Isaiah Williams making it. Now, the good news is if they love Caden Davis and Darius Fountain, those guys might be able to get snuck through into the practice squad, right? Uh, Davis, I would imagine. Yeah. Darius Fountain. I mean, I think both can be snuck on there, but I think there's different rules that apply. I mean, Fountain's a four-year player, so... Yeah, I think you can keep veterans now. I went went and read the... um, It's just changed. (laughs) It's just changed. And they, they, you can keep a... You can keep a veteran player. So, feels like it's a huge day for all those receivers. Is it a huge day for Brandon Joseph? Is Brandon Joseph going to make this roster, or is Brandon Joseph need to perform one more time to kind of be a, a a guy that solidifies a spot. Well, it feels like Brandon Joseph. It's the battle is between Brandon Joseph and C.J. Moore, mm-hmm. right? And yep. C.J. Moore has the upper hand in that he's a special teams guy. He's been very good on special teams, but as an overall defender, I don't think there's any question. Brandon Joseph has been the better overall defender. So when it comes down to it, I mean, to me, I'd go Brandon Joseph, not just because he's my guy, but trying to be as objective as I can. Right. This is a guy who's played well when the time comes when you're going against an offense and you need somebody in the back end of the defense, and and I think he really has played well and he deserves to be on this team. So here's the thing about it. it just like everything else, 
we have been privy to some of the information, but not all the information. Right. Remember yesterday when we were out of camp, we saw Hendon Hooker put the ball on the ground again. And what we were watching, he did it two other times in that, in that practice on Wednesday. Um, and he's got a ton of promise. I'm, I'm really excited about the future of Hendon Hooker. But when we, when otherwise somebody that we accept as a really good coach, Dan Campbell says something that we don't understand, like Nate Sudfeld has the leg up right now, in spite of what we've all seen on Sundays, and that is Sudfeld has struggled in the preseason games and Hendon Hooker's look better. But, I mean, what do they always say about quarterback play? You have to take care of the football. And, and again, the blame night might not have been on Hendon Hooker when he ran into the fullback in practice and fumbled it. It might not be on Hendon Hooker on the missed exchange with Zonovan Knight in the preseason game against Kansas City. But if you're building a case for why Dan Campbell would say it, not building a case for Sudfeld, but but trying to understand why Dan Campbell would say something that many people out there and us, I mean, we were like, huh, the case would be built around taking care of the football. Brandon Joseph had a interception and a forced fumble in two preseason games. Part of the information that we are seeing screams Brandon Joseph should make this team. It feels like he would do himself a lot of good by having a good game. But in practice, if he keeps getting burnt deep and missing assignments, then that, that could be part of the, the, the evaluation as well. Yeah, sure, it could be. It doesn't sound like that's it. It just sounds like it's special teams versus, you know, just having a guy who's a potential quality backup safety. Mm -hmm. um, and does Brandon Joseph even have – does he have more potential? Does he have potential to be a starting safety someday? Um and I just, you know how I feel about the attrition with injuries in, in, in the secondary. I, I don't think you can have enough guys back there. So if it comes to it, I want the guy that can play. Uh, not that C.J. Moore can't, but it sounds like and it looks like Brandon Joseph is more adept to playing safety than C.J. Moore is. I'd rather have the guy that can play that than the guy that's going to be, um, you know, your contributor on special teams. And he's a big contributor on special teams. Well, the 53-man projected roster from Dave Burkett of the Detroit Free Press – I made one change from my pre. This is I'm, I'm quoting now. You want to do a Dave Burkett voice? Let it go. <laughs> Maybe not. Could you could you do a Dave Burkett voice? Not really. Yeah, I mean it's he, he's measured. Yeah, and says smart things. Yeah. So if I that's neither one of us. Yeah, yeah, that's a great point. Here's what Dave wrote. I made one change from the pre-training camp roster prediction, giving Brandon Joseph the fourth safety spot over C.J. Moore. Moore still has special teams value, but Joseph is a more capable defensive player, and the Lions have a solid core of coverage guys in Vaki, Reeves Mabin, and Dorsey. So, meaning kick coverage guys. So, if it's a huge day for Brandon Joseph, um, it would do him some good. I guess it would do C.J. Moore some good. <laughs> Those guys go out and have good games. All right, is it a huge day for James Mitchell and, Sh and Shane Zilstra, the two tight ends? I think it is. I don't think they keep both of them. So mm -hmm. one guy's got to step up over the other or, or, or show himself more. I This is a tough one because I could see th there's – both guys have qualities you like. Mm -hmm. um, Zilstra might be a more polished receiver, and yet, I don't know, I just like James Mitchell. Yeah. I feel like James Mitchell gives them more. There's more – after the catch, I, I think he's more of a weapon. Is is he he's not as tall i don't think as zilstra is but um as i look at it zilstra well they're six six four and they're both six four and they're both well mitchell's a little bit bigger so who's going to give you more in the running game mm -hmm. um i don't know if it's a wash or not in the passing game zilstra might have the upper hand there but to me i just like james mitchell better I always like James Mitchell. you know i've cited this stat a lot but i know everybody doesn't listen to every second of every show his Virginia Tech, his last two seasons at Virginia Tech, his numbers, and I was over two seasons, looked like Brock Bowers, the tight end out of Georgia. In terms of number of catches, it was twice as many games. But the part that I think is comparable was the yards per catch. James Mitchell was a big play wide receiver. But a big part of that third tight end is you have to be able to block. You have to be. Because your third tight end comes in a lot in goal-to-goal -goal situations. Yeah. They don't come in and where being a 18 yards per catch guy matters as much. I feel like if Zilstra is a better blocker, and that's an if, if he's a better blocker, Mitchell might be the better guy to have on the roster if one of your top tight ends, one of your top two tight ends gets hurt, and he's going to play more 
in you know when the ball's at the middle of the field. I mean, plus Shane Zilstra played under Hayden Fox over at Minnesota State. <laughs> so yeah, that, that was a TV show. Is it a huge day for Mitchell Agude, for Matthew Betts, for the Owuku kid? I mean, how big a day is it for those guys that are battling for backup edge rusher spots? Well, that seems like it's a pretty big day for them. Um, you're, you're talking about that last edge rusher on the roster, and or, or not just edge rusher, but defensive lineman. Um, even with Kaminsky out, you still have to account for, for whatever you want, nine or ten guys. Uh I don't know if you go higher than that or not, but I I still feel like Houston is safe. Do they have room to add another? Do they have room for Uku or Agude? The fact that we saw Agude lead that team out onto the field for, was it the second half or was it for the first, uh, yeah. uh, for the second half of the, of the scrimmage? I'm trying to figure out if that's something or nothing. I mean, that's sticking with me. And I think that th- that's a guy that they've liked. It feels like all off season long. Back to mini camp time, we were hearing about a good day that hey, this guy's you know showing up a little bit, mm-hmm. um, and he's he's played well enough in the in uh, training camp and in preseason. So I I don't know the if I'm looking at the numbers, can you add a good day if he can? I would, but that means some other roster spot has to be trimmed. So yeah, I think Houston makes it. I think a good day makes it. So. According to Dave Burkett, Free Press, Houston makes it and Agude makes it. And they don't have a spot for Matthew Betts and Iguku. So, I mean, look, it's... But those are two guys that might make it to a practice squad. Might make it to a practice squad. And I will tell you right now that if Betts doesn't land the Lions practice squad, he'll be on somebody else's roster. It's quite possible. So if the Lions are trying to hope to get him through, I'm not sure they're going to be able to. Because he has... He's he's flash. I don't know if he's been great, but he has flash. And he had the, I mean, the one sack that he had last week was, he just made a quick inside move, yeah. and the guy, the right tackle, had no chance. The right tackle right was in. Kansas City's international player project yeah. guy. Um, and so, well, he's Canadian. <laughs> no, he played in the Canadian league. Yeah, you're you're talking about a pl- a guy that each team has a you know an international player that is. I don't want to say a gimmick, but it's it's I mean it's cool yeah. that the game's trying to expand and they're allowing people to have these roster spots taken up by Europeans, but but it's more than one to play. And he's he has flashed in some other plays and and because he was so productive in the Canadian League last year with 18 sacks, I mean that's that's hard to ignore too. I just I don't think he makes the Lions roster, but I think he makes somebody else's 